I want to just start off by saying this is going to be half as long as what we presented yesterday, and there will probably be a few kinks along the way, so just bear with us. But as they said, we're Team My Two Cents Radio. Um, we're just going to quickly introduce ourselves. My name is Connor. Um, I'm a junior from Kansas City, Missouri. My name is Gabriel Rikoff. I'm a sophomore from Savannah, Missouri. Georgie. My name is uh, George Angelov, and I'm a senior uh, computer science student at the University of Missouri. And I have this. Um, and my name is Jack, and I love radio. And uh, we're going to hear a little bit about some of the app that I really like. Yeah, so when we set out to create a mobile app to present the PMP's content, we kind of looked at it from a perspective of what problems can this app solve. And the first kind of problem that we isolated was the fact that Jack, um, being in our age demographic and loving radio, is unusual. Um, oh, hey, stop pressing things. Okay. <laughs> Jack is unusual. Um, so that kind of isolates our first problem, which is that young people, <laughs> young people are not really listening to public radio um, as much as those older than them. And the second problem that we isolated that we're also solving with our app, um, we believe, is that the distribution model for public media and the content creation model continues to evolve while the revenue model is kind of lagging behind. So we set out to solve both of those problems. Um, and we really don't see those as problems, but rather as opportunities. So what we created was the My Two Cents Radio app. Um, basically, it's a mobile audio player that streams on-demand content from all over the PMP. Users can listen via category or playlist um, because we really have been holding true to this idea that we want our listeners to discover something new. The people we're targeting aren't necessarily listening to PMP content to begin with, but we don't want people to go directly to a show they know because we want them to discover something new. So we've kind of curated content for them and we've organized it via category and playlist. Um, and finally, uh, the name My Two Cents is a pun and it's kind of the backbone of our app. Uh, we want listeners to, when they discover something new, share their two cents, share their appreciation for what they're listening to. And they can do that through, through various social media avenues, but also by donating as little as two cents directly in the app and that money goes to the show that they're appreciating. And so, do we, can we switch? Can we switch? Um, and so now we have the walkthrough, and this was a difficult part of our presentation last time, and so I'm going to be extra careful. This walk over here. Um, so over there. Okay. And. Um, Screen is black. Um, and this is a little bit of our logo that we see here. And uh, when we click it, uh, we see a simple splash screen. And it hopefully loads, God willing, to Mizzou Wireless. Um, and uh, while, we're, while we're at it, oh, here we go. Um, and when we, the first thing we see is the categories. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can also see some tones, which are more specific filters of these categories. And so one of the ones that I really like and that I've been listening to a lot is race and culture. And when the first and foremost, our app is a player app and we filter content from PRX and NPR, so hopefully across the PMP. And it, we can, if you're not interested in the content, you can fast forward, you can pause, and you can also drag and if you find a spot that you really like and that you really appreciate, you can in real time give your two cents, your opinion, and your money by clicking this big button. And we see here you can give two cents, actually two cents, or you can select a different, select a different amount of 490 because I'm really generous. And we can go to another piece even. And when we try to donate again, we are tasked with refilling the balance. And this is a really important part of our app that not only can you give inside your app, but you can also refill how much you can give inside your app. It's a really unique thing in public radio that in the same listening experience that you can actually give and support the thing that keeps it going that you're enjoying. So we can refill the balance and with my credit card XXX fake, we can buy it and have the thing be successful. And if we wait a little bit, we can hopefully donate again. Here we go. Look at that. My two cents, not a simulation, a real thing. And give two cents. And another cool part of the app is that you can do other things while you're listening because very rarely are we doing one thing ever. And so you can scroll 
you can scroll down, new to Android. And uh, you can fast forward inside of, outside of the player, and you can even, if this was still, if we have the sound on, you can even hear it from, you can even hear it when you're outside of the app and you're texting and doing other things. And so, and finally, when, once you've donated, once you've refilled your balance, you can share what you're doing and, that, and the fact that you're charitable by tweeting about it. And you can also kind of gamify how much you're actually giving by this kind of schizophrenic ticker at the top that shows you how much, how charitable you are and how much of a value you're giving to public radio and how much you're receiving. So these ratios are really cool because you can see like, oh, I'm donating two cents per every hour I'm listening to, for instance. And, and that's about it for the walkthrough. Oh, and of course the history. Um, and if you forget, as I did about the history, you can, you can look through um, the past shows that you've listened to and let's say you forgot or you were now feeling charitable about giving, you can say the first show I listened to I really loved but I didn't really understand about giving to public radio because I'm new to public radio. You can still give in that same amount and it's all good. All right, thanks. All right, so Jack was really excited uh, as you guys can see and we were really excited uh, actually working on this project, um, we really believe we did something interesting, innovative, and uh, we uh, cater to both uh, the user and the content providers. And a little bit about the content providers. Um, we are getting content currently from PRX and NPR, um, and we're funneling the content and mixing the content from both networks, and then streaming that inside the app. So it provides a, a, a continuous stream for hours upon hours. Another thing that Jack mentioned was the Google um, in-app billing. Our, um, re the reason we chose Google in-app billing was because it provided an easy way for the user to um, donate inside the app and also provide a way for them to refill their balance. And we didn't want the user to go anywhere else outside the app, uh, register a new account, remember a new password, and go through all that hassle just to donate two cents. So that was, that was one of the driving forces behind, uh, behind our decision. And another one was um, we, uh, we wanted to be able to transfer um, the app onto, di onto different um, uh, platforms, for instance, uh, iOS, and we thought that integrating with uh, the standard um, payment system for the actual um, platform will make it easier for us, for us to tr uh, transfer uh, to, uh, you know, to another platform. Um, and another thing is uh, we are extremely customizable. Um, if you, the, the server um, is, is, is automatically um, expanding itself when you add a new network. And what happens is if you add a new network, um, the content is gonna, is gonna automatically start mixing in into the, into the single stream and the user wouldn't even know that anything happened. All they're gonna do is they're gonna, they're gonna listen to uh, an even more awesome content. And we really strived to, uh, to implement and make it very customizable and expandable um, because we want to we wanna provide even more content in the future. So like we said, we isolated two problems in the, in the outset for our app to solve, and the first of which was getting young people to listen to and, listen to and care about public radio. So we kind of isolated um, this youth and young adult demographic as who we were focusing on, somewhere in the range of 18 to 30 year olds. So we kind of figured out a few characteristics of this group that you can see here on the left. Um, they face an oversaturated media market. Every person in this demographic has a smartphone with a million different media apps on it, and a lot of them are giving them good content. Um, they have a short attention span. Um, they like to be engaged, actively engaged in contributing to the media they're consuming, um, not passively. And we're in an age of multitasking. A lot of screens are in front of a person at any given time. Um, so to satisfy all of those characteristics, we kind of tailored our app um, to this demographic by doing these things on the right. So first of all, we had to make sure that our content was not only good content, but targeted for this demographic. So um, there's minor curation going on, um, the most of which you can see in our playlists. Um, we m wanted to make sure we had a smooth user experience so that people um, could easily use our app and would stay in our app. In terms of participatory content, we're doing a few things. Um, first of all, we tried to make sure this was a social experience. Um, you can do things like share what you're listening to on Twitter, but we intend to um, fully integrate our app with all the social networks in the future. 
um, as well as have other social aspects of our app. But what we really like is the donation destination. We mentioned that the money that you're donating is going to the shows that you're listening to, the shows that you're appreciating. And we think people in this demographic are really going to respond well to that um, because they will feel like they're actually a producer of this show. Um, their money, um, through marketing and other strategies, we're going to make sure that the user knows that whatever they're donating is contributing to the show and the host that they like and that they appreciate. And finally, in terms of multitasking, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out if our app was an active or passive listening experience, and we kind of settled on the fact that it's neither. You can have it on in the background while you're cleaning your house or going for a jog, um, but if you want to have the app open and interact with its functions, you can do that as well. And we really think this demographic responds well to that as well. So I mentioned earlier that we cater to both the user and the content providers. So while Jack is playing his hours and hours of, of continuous content, um, listening in the background and everything, what I'm most excited is what's going on behind the scenes, um, which Jack doesn't see. Um, we are collecting user patterns um, from inside the app, and we're collecting all that information, and we're storing it in our database. We are collecting information such as what categories Jack listened to the most, uh, which categories he donates the most, uh, which programs he donates the most, uh, what time during the day does he donate the most, um, what he listened to before he donated. So information like that that is vital to the content providers and possibly vital to us to, to later on curate a more specific content that is relevant to the user. And we believe that the data collection part is an extremely important part of our, of our system. And everything is, like I said, is stored in the database. Um, we, 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 we store the information in raw format and so later on, whoever wants to use the data, they have an infinite amount of opportunities to, to extrapolate um, user patterns from that data or any type of, of pattern for that matter. Another thing we implemented was Google Analytics. We believe that um, Google Analytics was an important part of our app because it provides information such as how the app is reacting. Um, does the app crash? Where are our users located? Um, what types of devices use our app? Um, we also collect every type of user, um, user action, such as a button click, a category click, a donate button click, and all sorts of information that we believe is vital in, in continuing with this, with this project and vital to, to developing and extrapolating user, user patterns from this to later improve the performance of the app and also help the content providers bring even more relevant content um, inside the app. Yeah, so, so in essence, it's all the creepy stuff that makes for a better listening experience for everybody. <laughs> Summary. Yeah, okay, so uh, as we were talking about, one of the most important things of the app is that it kind of revolutionizes how people hopefully will donate to public content because now they can donate inside of an app and that's unlike any other app on the market where you have to go to a third party. But the most important thing about that is that we have to create an amazing content experience for the user to draw them to the app so that they want to use our app and they can donate in their app instead of using content from somewhere else and then coming to our app to donate. And so here are some ideas for futures of the app to improve that content experience. Um, we want to expand our social integration. So you saw Twitter on the walkthrough, but we have plans to expand that social integration from Twitter to Facebook and other social media sites. Um, the ability to self-curate content, as Georgie was talking about whenever he's saying that he's collecting data, um, we're going to use that data to make each person's user experience greater because we are creating a profile of that person. So hopefully they have a better content experience. Um, we also uh, offer appreciation receipts, such as uh, if they reach a certain donation requirement, then we send them out a personalized email to say, hey, yeah, we've received your message. Here's the content you've listened to. Here's links to listen to the content again. We appreciate your donation. Here's what it's doing. Um, so finally, just to kind of recap what we've done here today, uh, we're bringing in an entirely new market of listeners. You can't just go to our app and search for one specific piece. We didn't necessarily want that idea because we wanted you to be able to, uh, to discover new radio, and that's what you do through our app. Um, the only app on the market that allows listeners to support their shows directly. Again, you don't have to go to a third party to listen on our, or to, to donate through our app. You donate right there on the app, you can refill your balance, you donate again. Um, it, it catches public radio's distribution model and its revenue model up with each other. Uh, the content is normally distributed through NPR on your radio or something, but, uh, and, and now it's on your app as well. But typically the revenue model is only through radio. Um, so we're catching that re revenue model up with the distribution model. So uh, we appreciate your guys' time. Uh, thanks for listening. We're really excited to share with you guys today. Yep.